Uh, it didn't really happen until I was in high school and took a speech class in which uh, I discovered uh, that I was pretty good at that. And th this was at a time when President Kennedy was running and I was quite enamored of President Kennedy, I think is like a lot of 16 and 17 year olds were. Uh, became very, very interested in politics when he uh, was elected and that continued in the, when I was participating in the speech class. I got to give a graduating, high school graduating, graduating speech to probably around 3,000 people uh, and um, that all just sort of came together, developed certain attitudes and philosophies and feelings about what was important in this world and concluded this, I can make a difference. I could really do something profound. This country provides those sorts of opportunities and that's what I'd like to do. So that's really when it happened uh, that I decided that I would like to be president. Uh, obviously the job is a lot more demanding uh, than I might have originally anticipated and probably it's a great relief that that never did happen. Well, obviously there are certain uh, restrictions. You can't go out, uh, and, and I was involved in politics in a significant way before I became a judge, and that was out the window because when you become a judge, you know, you're no longer involved in uh, party politics, and, you, and uh, there are politics involved, but not uh, traditional politics, not politics uh, involving elections and those kinds of things, except in so far as they related to the judiciary. And certainly that's one way it changed my life. I wasn't much of a party animal to begin with, and uh, I think some people find the restrictions uh, that you experience as a judge uh, extremely limiting. I, I really didn't live that kind of lifestyle anyway. I think there were a lot of things that I like to say when I was politically involved, uh, certain uh, ideas that I had that I like to talk to people about and to publicly express uh, in conversation with people, uh, that came to an end because you, you, you can't do those sorts of things as a judge. You may hold all kinds of uh, viewpoints and political ideas, uh, but you can't share those when you're a judge because you won't be a judge very long and there are ethical ramifications to that. So that certainly was one of the ways that my life was changed. And I think also as I look over the 31 years, uh, it, it gave me a really interesting perspective of people that I would never have had um, but for the fact that I had the opportunity to serve as a judge. Uh, I think it gave me generally a respect for people, uh, sympathy for people, uh, concern for people, uh, and, I, and I had those kinds of things to one degree or another, but that was expanded and it was different. And a certain amount of frustration that I could not do more in my job uh, to make things better for people. People uh, need to be treated with respect. When you're a lawyer, you run around and you're representing different people, but when you sit on the bench uh, and you see people day after day and you see the sad situations that they find themselves in, I had the opportunity uh, to sit in family law for two and a half years. I sat in county court uh, crime for five years. I've been in civil for many years, and of course I was chief judge for six years, and you'd get a clear picture of um, the situations that people find themselves in. Uh, the way it impacts their life. What I learned from all of this that's important to me is people need to be treated with respect and sensitivity and concern. If we all did that, it would be a better world. I could have run and, and served another term. When I made the original decision to retire, uh, my father, who was at that time probably about 90 or 89, uh, was in extraordinary health, and I was looking forward to the opportunity to spend a few years with him. Uh, and um, unfortunately, he then developed cancer, and happily he didn't suffer. He passed away very, uh, very quickly. But when I made the original decision, that was part of my plan. My father was a retired postal clerk, and he said to me one day, son, you better retire. You're not going to live forever. He was a very wise man, and that was one of the reasons why I chose to retire. Another reason was 31 years uh, is a long time.
I think that I've done a good job. and I'm proud of what I've accomplished, and I didn't want to push my luck, frankly. <laughs> there are things that I can do now that I may not be able to do when I'm 70 or 72. So it's a combination of uh, wanting to spend time with my father, wanting to spend time with my family, and i got a lot of plans and a lot of things that I'm doing that you just can't do when you're on the bench. Time moves incredibly fast. The older you get, the faster it goes, and I uh, there there are things that I want to accomplish um, that I wouldn't be able to probably if I stayed on the bench for another term. You know, I tell people that when I retired, it essentially is, it was like getting rid of one of my full-time jobs because I teach, uh, I, I spend a lot of time uh, teaching judges and teaching students, and I'm going to continue to do that. One of the greatest things about this job for me personally is the time that I have got to spend with the students. I had at least maybe more than a hundred interns over my 31 years in this office. I had interns from Stetson University of Florida, FSU, I had one from a law school in Washington, I had undergraduate interns in here, I had high school students in here, and I have to tell you uh, that was incredibly gratifying. I had a great time with them. What they do for you when you have this job is they help you maintain your perspective because you're always seeing things through their eyes. You always have that sense of freshness that they have, and you don't lose that. And I, I would sit in here sometimes, and I'd have three interns next door, and I could hear them talking to one another. And it was really cool to listen to that, because they, they, their perspective of what was going on was just so fresh and exciting. And that kept me from losing that. I always understood what this was about, and that is attributable to the students. My future plans are to keep teaching. Uh, I got two great granddaughters that I mentioned earlier to spend time with them. I'm going to keep writing the book for Wes. I may write a couple of more books. I'm interested in exploring the possibility of writing a couple of novels that I've been thinking about for years. I'm going to clean up uh, all of the paperwork that's been developing over the last 31 years. Maybe do a little bit of travel. My wife is a dean at St. Pete College, and uh, so if I travel, it's probably going to be during her vacation periods or alone.